Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to These Go to 11. Once again, I'm Nathan Bell. Uh, my co-host Steve Hartland is not on uh, tonight going another, um, not solo, but I have another guest that I'm looking forward to introducing to you all. Real quick, want to give a shout out to uh, Mission Aware, a longtime sponsor. I'm just so thankful for them and their partnership um, with These Go to 11. Uh, don't forget to check out Mission Aware and all their great products online. Um, don't want to waste any time. We have a little bit uh, shorter podcast tonight. Going to go about a half hour, but still a lot to talk about and a lot of pack in there. So I want to introduce uh, Ryan Williams from River Valley Worship. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Nathan. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. So excited that um, you could be on uh, taking this time and talking with us. Um, Ryan, why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, friends, family, just a little bit of a bio. Yeah, absolutely. So, my name is Ryan Williams. I'm the lead worship pastor at River Valley Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And River Valley Church is a church of 9,000 people. We have eight campuses and then um, eight campuses locally and then one campus in uh, Africa. Mm. And uh, I've been with our lead pastor, uh, Pastor Rob Ketterling, for 11 years. Um, I tell people all the time, like, I'm a pastor first. Um uh, I love connecting with people, doing life with people. Um, I get to lead worship. We get to write songs. We get to make albums. But it all comes out of a relational place. You know, we, we get to marry people, do their officiating of their ceremonies. We get to do hospital visits. That's awesome. People have babies. We're the first people to be there. Um, and so that's what it kind of flows out of. Um, but we're super excited about this new album. It's our fifth album. It's our first with BC Worship. A uh, new label, and um, it's called Million Lifetimes. It's going to be out March second. We're super excited about it. Awesome. Um, and maybe you could just um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, just kind of background how you uh, how you got into music and and kind of ended up, um, you know, working with the church. You know, just kind of your your background with that. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up. I grew up in the church. Uh, I grew up in, um, like I said, River Valley's in Minneapolis, but I grew up in uh, Detroit, the Detroit, Michigan area. And I grew up in a very um, uh, a charismatic Pentecostal atmosphere where um, there's a lot of emphasis on the Holy Spirit and there's a lot of emphasis on music. And um, so from an early age, um, I can always remember that connection between um, music that moved you um, mm -hmm. and kind of the, the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit and um, I feel like that was a blessing. You know, I feel like that was um, <clears throat> a benefit um, all through my childhood, being in that atmosphere, being familiar, meaning knowing what the presence of God looked like, felt like. And that kind of theme carried me through my childhood years. And then I studied music in college. And um, I've never had a crisis of faith moment, but I wasn't too interested in uh, – working at a church by the time I was getting out of school, mm. got had other plans. I, I showed up at River Valley Church, um, long story short, because my internship at a recording studio fell through and I needed an internship like desperately just to, just to graduate. And someone had recommended this church. I never heard of it really before. And they said, Hey, before you start interning, maybe you should show up to a service and, and check it out. So I did on a Saturday night. I had no, mm preconceived notions. I had no expectation. And this was like uh, 11, 12 years ago, and the church was much different then, mm -hmm. much smaller then. But I walked into that Saturday night service, and there's a spirit and momentum and passion and vision in the people. And uh, that's the same type of spirit and passion and vision that's in the church today. Um, we've seen that kind of grow and grow and grow and continue, even though things have gotten bigger and maybe a little bit more complex. Um those values, the kind of Holy Spirit momentum that's kind of pushed the church forward has always been there and it's still there. And um, that's really the bottom line. That's kind of the, the foundation of where we write these songs out of and how we make these albums. These albums are never like a pet project for us on the side. They're really woven into church life here at River Valley. I think that's what makes them so um, stirring. Yeah. That's that's so cool. That's so great. Now, when you um, you know, you had talked about um, coming out and and having an internship. So, was music kind of always a focus for you growing up? Something you wanted to get into? Oh, absolutely. And um, I was the kind of kid that 
I love music and I love sports. And as a child, you have unlimited um, amounts of time on your hands. So I can kind of <laughs> do both. <laughs> I kind of do both for a long time. You know, my first instrument was playing drums and taking drum lessons and mm-hmm. playing drums at church. And then I started singing at 12 years old. And all of a sudden, you know, in my church context at, this, at the time, they, they didn't have a worship leader for the youth group. And they looked at me as a 13 year old and said, you, you're the guy to do it. And I remember crying <laughs> after the first time I led worship because I felt just so, um, <laughs> so embarrassed, so yeah. awful. But anyways, I was in a place at the time where I could, you know, learn and grow and develop with little to no pressure and I could mess up and make mistakes. And, and ever since I was, you know, like I said, 12 or 13, I knew that I would be leading worship for the rest of my life. I didn't have a plan of, you know, trying to be on a church staff or trying to do it as a job. Um, um, sure. But leading worship was always a sacred, a sacred space for me, even since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's great. Who were some of, I mean, who were some of your influences growing up musically? Um, people, you know, even now that, you know, I, musicians are always trying to look for their, you know, signature, you know, yeah. kind of, kind of tune, but there's always influences of people in their background. Um, and I'm sure, you know, growing up in the church, there was probably some of that, but who outside of, you know, kind of church influences were, yeah. were your influences, um, musically? Yeah, I, I would s- you know, if I were to look at my own influences and the little the musical journey that I've made throughout the years, I think it'd be pretty eclectic. I mean, I think everyone, it's pretty common for everyone to talk about when they were kids. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of soak up whatever their parents were listening to at the time. Sure. For me, my, my parents were um, huge fans of that kind of golden era of Christian music. And so when I was in the van, in the backseat of the van listening to music, it was... Um, it was really like Stephen Curtis Chapman and um, BB and CC Winans and yep. DC Talk and all of those kind of seem a little random, but when I look back at it, you know, a lot of those, um, you know, really influential artists in that golden era of Christian music, they had a great handle on melody, mm-hmm. and um, they're really great singers. And no matter and no matter what context you put them in, they could really sing. And I feel like some of that rubbed off on me is kind of having a grasp of what a great melody is and how a great melody can um, really communicate a lot to a person's soul. And so that's what I think of early on. And then as I grew and kind of gained my own influences, I was into everything from Stevie Wonder to Radiohead Mm -hmm. um, to Delirium um, and everybody in between. And so I just love music. I love how it's just such a crazy kaleidoscope, even throughout the years, there's so much to pull from, uh, and I think it's a it's a real honor to be able to pull from everything and, and and use it as tools and color for corporate worship. I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so awesome to to hear you say that. And um, you know, I can tell you know just from growing up. I mean, it was cool to hear you say Stephen Curtis Chapman because he's still today one of my favorite um, artists Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Just in, um, you know, not in the only in the stuff that he writes, but just in, you know, the testimony that he's maintained over the years. Absolutely. So that's so really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, so tell me, you know, have have you actually personally been with um, the the River Valley Worship Band um, touring? Kind of maybe touring is not the right word, but just traveling around and playing music and worship in other countries. You talked about the church having. Uh, a satellite church in Africa or a campus in Africa. And so um, have you been around um, kind of the world playing for different churches and, mm-hmm. and things like that? Yeah. My most recent experience um, with that type of trip was last May, we took a small river Valley worship crew on a global project team. We here at our church, we call missions trips, uh, global projects mm-hmm. and, um, Kind of a global heart is one of our key values as a church. Anyways, we took a small team to Istanbul, Turkey. Oh, wow. And um, that's a high-tension uh, atmosphere. There's a lot going on there politically and spiritually. Yeah. You know, there's two sides to Istanbul. There's a U- European side, Asian side. And this nine-day trip, um, when we uh, – to make a long story short, the, the European side of Istanbul is kind of what I thought it would look like in my head, um, kind of Middle Eastern – splashed onto European, you know, a lot of people with 
you know, coverings on their heads, women completely covered, kind of dusty and obviously very historic in the architecture. And then we took a boat across um, this body of water to the Asian side of Istanbul, and I was blown away. It was probably the hippest, <laughs> coolest, youngest community I've ever been. It made it made Brooklyn, New York look like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. put in your own little description there so I don't sure. offend anyone in this hometown. Sure. Um, but it's just block after block after block of young um creative artistic people and we took a crew into that part of Istanbul and for for night after night we would go into different clubs and different bars and we'd play music. We played we play, you know, the biggest cover songs in the world, songs that people knew even in Istanbul. Mm-hmm. And then we would straight up play River Valley worship songs. And um well, as we were doing that, other people on our team and a missionary there that we were working with, they were having conversations with Turks and using us as a tool saying, you see that guy there playing that song? This is what he's singing about, and this is why it means so much to him. And we're actually leading worship in these bars and clubs throughout mm-hmm. Istanbul, Turkey, which wasn't quite um, completely legal to do. Right. But the whole, it was such an amazing spirit experience to see the divine, the Holy Spirit being felt in these dark places where people weren't quite expecting that to happen. And you can see it on people's faces. And it just reaffirmed to me that the presence of God trumps everything. Yeah. The presence of God is what we need in our lives, in our songs, in our churches. And here we were across the other side of the globe singing a few songs that are going to be on this album. We were singing a song, Hope Has a Name, and His Name is Jesus. Mm. And that message, it shook the walls of those bars, and it was an amazing thing to be a part of. Yeah. And that's, and that's so great to hear you say that too, because, um, you know, just, I, I love the, you know, the, the title of that, you know, hope has a name and his name is Jesus, you know, just because there, you know, in America, it's so easy to get into this mindset of, you know, oh, you know, everything's good and, you know, I'm good. And, you know, compared to the rest of the world, we have so much wealth and so much independence. And, you know, you get outside, you know, these American walls and you just see, you know, how broken people are. And, you know, I mean, and I would even dare say if you get out of, you know, kind of your little suburban area and, you know, kind of get into some of these other rougher places, even in America, you can just see how people are just broken and hurting. And so that's just, you know, it's so great to, you know, hear songs like that coming out. And um, let me let me ask you, too, um, you know, just kind of what. What is like the philosophy, I guess, of, um, you know, the, the worship band? And obviously it's going to, um, be in line with the church, um, the local church that you're involved yep. with there. But there's also, I feel like a sense of like global outreach and ministry as well, because, you know, to me, the local church is, its job is to go out and do missions, but obviously the primary focus is to, you know, be a light within the community and the center that you're in. But it seems like with what you're doing with this worship, there's more of a global outreach and ministry that's going on and taking place um, outside yeah. of that. So maybe you could like, you know, kind of suss that out for me a little bit, you know, the mi- yeah. mission and ministry within the church and then the mission and ministry, you know, outside of the local Absolutely. church that you attend. Yeah. River Valley. I mean, we believe that missions and worship are closely tied together. We always say that missions exist exist because there are places where worship doesn't exist. You know, they're they're that tied together. And you know, when I think about River Valley worship and kind of our thought process when it comes to the corporate setting of worship, you know, we're not trying to chase some sort of fleeting emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not that at all. We're actually just trying to remind people of their place in the story of God. Mm. You know, John 14 is Jesus says, I'm the way and the truth and the life. And so when we're getting together in a church service and we're worshiping God together, we're reminding people that he's the way Mm. he's the way into salvation. He's the way through their storm. He's the way out of their trouble and their trial. You know, he says, I'm the truth. He's, he's the, um, He's the answer for their lives, for their dreams, for their uh, calling, for their finances, for their healing. And then he says, I am the life. You know, we, apart from Jesus, we just live an echo, a shadow of the life that we were meant to live. But Jesus says, I've come to bring you life, life that's full and abundant. And um, 
So we it's those really those three things that we're trying to remind people of every time mm-hmm. for corporate worship. Um, it's quite the honor and it's quite the sacred calling to do what we get to do. And we don't take it lightly. We always tell our worship leaders that you're pastoral musicians. Mm. If you get 20 minutes in front of those people, if you get 15 minutes in front of those people, 25 minutes, whatever the case is, whatever the time frame, you need to take those 20 minutes and think pastorally. How can you foster a connection um, between the people and God? How can you facilitate that? How can you be the matchmaker mm. with God and the people? And, um, we're definitely not up there just to, to sing a few songs and hope it goes well. We really believe that there's a different authority that we as worship pastors can hold. Hmm. And um, we've seen it in our church. Our church has a very participatory, engaging worship culture. And I think it's because um, we value a level. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds too, like from what you're saying, you know, when you talk to your worship pastors, that the focus is on, you know, making sure that what's, um, what's sung is going to reflect what's preached. And yeah, that is hopefully reflecting, you know, scripture. Um, you know, I know several, um, you know, worship, um, bands that are out there and, um, you know, listen to their music sometimes. And it's like, well, scripture might be in there, I think somewhere, you know, but it it seems like, you know, your, your focus is, Hey, if we're, if we're here ministering to these people, then we want to make sure that our songs are just saturated with the gospel and who Christ is and with scripture. And, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about that, the process of, you know, creating some of these songs and music that you do. We do believe in the, we do believe in the tangible power of the name of Jesus. So if you look at our recent, that most recent album, a million lifetimes, the name of Jesus is in every song because we believe in the power of it. And, uh, and also from a, you know, a practical standpoint, we have, a <clears throat> we run our, our lyrics through, um, a guy in our community here at River Valley who has his doctorate in, in, uh, worship theology. And so we just don't want to cut any corners at all. We, we know that people need to be singing truth. They need to be singing the Bible. They need to be singing scripture. They need to be singing the name of Jesus. And there's not really time for us to be singing kind of just catchy phrases or poetic language. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just got to be truth. And there are ways to be creative um, with the truth, but you can't change. Um, it's not our job to add to the truth of what the gospel is. The gospel stands on its own. Um, one of our values as a church is inspiration. So how does the worship team or how does the worship ministry at R- River Valley uphold that value of inspiration? And we really say, you know, if you put the focus on the name of Jesus, there's no hype that you really need to build up. There's no inspiration that you need to really stir up or conjure up. Mm. The gospel is the inspiration. And if the gospel is preached, if the name of Jesus is sung, people's hearts would be stirred. And it might sound like a, a magical, mystical type of answer, but our church is proof of that. When you lift up the name of Jesus, people will come close. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. I just, you know, I want to remind our listeners that we are um, speaking with Ryan Williams um, from River Valley Worship um, and River, River Valley Church. Is that, um, is that the church out there um, in Minneapolis? You said it was? That's right. Um, And new album is released, releasing March um, 2nd. Um, So just want to, you know, make our listeners aware of that as often as possible so they can, you know, go out there and and pick that up when it drops. Um, But, you know, everything you're saying is just, it, it just resonates so much because there, you know, there's so many churches out there who are, um, into the show and into, yeah. you know, the, you know, the, the, the kind of Joel Olstein, you know, we'll give you a pep talk and you'll go on your way and everything will be good. Um, you know, where it's, no, it's, it's the truth of scripture that, you know, draws people, um, to Christ, you know, for, for several thousand years, you know, it was, it was a bloodied naked man on a tree who was drawing people to himself. And somehow wow. we think with, you know, media and television, we need to spice things up and spruce things up, um, wow. in order to make it appealing. And I just love what you're saying, you know, that the truth of the gospel, the truth of who Christ is, is, is what's going to draw, um, people to himself. Um, yes. and you know, we're just kind of the vessels there who he uses, um, to accomplish that purpose and goal. Um, so that's, that's just awesome. Um, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about, um, some upcoming projects, um, that you all have, um, that people can, um, be praying for you or get behind, um, even, you know, support whether financially or whatever it might be. Um, talk to us about some things that are coming up and going on. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, church life is um, always moving rapidly and with lots of momentum. And then um, in this season of River Valley worship of us um, really and simply taking what we do in church every week and kind of taking it outside the four walls. Hmm. Um, we have a few different uh, radio tours coming up for River Valley worship, one in March around, along the West Coast and then one in April uh, down south. And we'll be going from radio station to radio station and sharing songs and talking about the album. Um, so just pray for wisdom and strength and energy and passion for those. Um, and um, I actually would pray for two things uh, in-house for River Valley Church. We have our Easter services, which are obviously a big deal for every church across the country right now. Um, but we are deep in the planning of that and mm. on the new album and songs on the new album are big tools for us to use during those Easter services. And, um, another big thing for us is our, our river Valley network conferences. We have a network of churches that, uh, we help resource and, um, they learn from us. We learn from them and we have a big conference in May, uh, where churches from all over the, the world are coming together. And, uh, I just pray that we'd be able to steward that well. Um, we're local church people through and through from A to Z. That's who we are. And so it excites us when we get to go out and travel. We're doing a few conferences as well in February and March. Um, but we're just as passionate about being the local church and helping the people down the street as well as helping the people on the other side of the country. I just love that ministry travels. And I love that, you know, God uses songs to travel where you've never been. And so I would just pray that, um, people can join with us and pray for this album launch that the Holy spirit would be experienced and felt and the name of Jesus would be lifted up. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for asking Nathan. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a great listener base here at these go to 11 and I know, um, those listeners are always interested in how they can pray for our guests who come on and, and, you know, the, the projects that they have going on. So, um, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, a few more minutes here, um, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, so one of the things that, um, you know, you were talking about was, you know, not just, um, the, you know, the extended, uh, overseas mission and ministry that you all have, but the local, um, being the church, which is great because I think some people forget sometimes that, you know, being the church involves, you know, being present in your community and making, you know, your presence and your name known in your community. And by doing that, you're going to be able to make Christ's presence and name known in your community. Right. Um, and so I was just wondering, um, you know, we have a lot of pastors out there um, who listen to us. We have a lot of um, church planners who listen to us. And so I was wondering, you know, if you um, could just talk about some of the uh, ministry things that you all do there, maybe give some people some ideas of things that they could be doing in their, um, you know, local churches. Um, so just some ideas that you all um, have implemented that you You've really seen kind of work for you in terms of you know connecting with people and drawing them uh, closer um, to to Christ and to the church. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do, we think of our weekend services, you know, as the as the front door, as the gate, and um, so even down to the practice of how long our services are and um, kind of the service flow. We're, we're really constantly thinking about the person who's on the fringe or the person. Who maybe he's had a, you know, a very uh, strict legalistic church background as a child, and maybe they haven't been back to church in a long time. And then they walk into our doors, and they hear the music, or they see young energy or young life, or even old people that have older people that have passion for Christ. And right away, they're they're struck by the different atmosphere of the church. And then once the word once the word goes forth, and if people are able to make a decision for Christ, that's where the strategy comes in because right away we we, we give these people um, a book that, that our staff wrote called Now What gives them clear steps to what to do now that they've made a decision for Christ. Mm -hmm. And the book is clearly, concisely written. And then after that point, we desperately try to get these people into a, a simple class called Next. And it's really just what their next step is as far as being part of River Valley Church. And um, that next class helps them find out what their spiritual gifts are, and then helps connect them to a certain team to be able to serve. Right away, after people make a decision for Christ at River Valley, want them to serve. Mm. And so whether that's going to be a life team, meaning a usher or a greeter or a parking lot attendant, mm -hmm. or um, if they walk further through the process, they may be a production team. Um, we have a serving culture, and we preach that from the, from the get-go. And so th that's the key moment, I think, in uh, someone's life in our church is once they make that decision for Christ, those next steps are key. 
And I think our church has done a, a pretty good job of facilitating those next steps. Mm. Um, we have leadership nights um, quarterly where in, the volunteer leaders of our church, again, if you're an us- usher, a greeter, a deacon on the worship team um, at every campus, we have these leadership nights where the leaders of that campus get together. We have extended worship. We have a, a teaching from our lead pastor, usually on video. And it's really something that unifies the body of Christ and stirs them up to keep giving their all to build the kingdom, serving, giving, sharing. Um, and uh, those nights, because they're all core believers, are really powerful nights uh, in the presence of God together. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, kind of the in-house um, discipleship and growing and training that you all do, because I think that's something that um, larger churches um, can be lacking sometimes is, you know, there's a tendency, oh, you know, we'll get people in and we'll get them serving and we'll get them involved and connected. But then when it comes to, you know, connecting them with other people and walking you know, um, through life with them and, you know, uh, you know, Bible studies and community groups, things like that. So talk a little bit about that and what goes on there. Yeah, there's a few different tools. I mean, um, probably a lot of churches uh, have a similar program like Alpha Mm -hmm. and, you know, people who are new to faith or have a lot of questions, our Alpha program at River Valley, and it's been this way, you know, for 11 or 12 years since I've been there, our Alpha program at uh, River Valley, um, just, um, so vital to the growth and the development of people and the uh, pastoral staff that we have teaching that class has always been spot on with the way they've handled the word and handled the truth and connected people's questions, connected the dots for people. We also have a thing called freedom encounter, which really zeroes in on any kind of, um, kind of, you know, nagging sin issues that people might have in their lives. We think it's important early on to address those things have an encounter with the truth, have an encounter with the gospel, have an encounter with God in his presence and um, experience real freedom. You know, I talked earlier about God has come to give us a life that's full. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the the process doesn't stop when you just become a Christian and you say yes to Jesus. There's also a a full, abundant life to live. And those freedom encounters have been uh, just essential in people's growth when it comes to overcoming you know, the sin issues in their lives. Yeah. Um, and then really, really big part of our discipleship. And again, it's one of our values is our heart is global. And we say within two years of coming to river Valley, we want you to go on a global project team mm. because without a doubt, a hundred percent of the time, um, when you go on a, a missions trip, it can be nine days, eight days. We have trips. We have, we send teams out every month on global project teams. It's a huge part of what we do. Anywhere from go to Iowa and serve at a, a Bible camp to go to Fiji or Russia or Africa and everything in between. And just that step of saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to step out of my own comfort zone, out of my own familiar boundary. I'm going to go to some other place for nine days and focus on you and focus on serving and sharing uh, your gospel to other people in a completely different part of the, the, the world. I mean, without a doubt, that opens people's eyes, that wakes up people's spirits to what God is doing in the church um, to the world. And so those are some key things that we we push really hard, Freedom Encounter, Alpha, and going going on a global project team. That's great. That's awesome. And I think what's so neat about that is you have, um, you have service and discipleship and training going on, um, at every level there. You know, you have it going on, you know, within the local church and then branching out into local areas and then, you know, branching out to the United States and branching out into the world. Um, you know, yeah. taking the gospel to all parts of the world. So that's, that's really awesome and excellent to hear, um, the things that are going on there. Um, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, I know we had to, um, cut it short a little bit today, but, um, it was so great having you on. I just want to remind our listeners, we were here talking with, um, Ryan Williams from River Valley Worship of River Valley Church. New record, um, drops on March 2nd. Um, so by the time, uh, this releases, probably going to plan to release this about a week before, um, it drops. So that way people have time to get hyped and psyched about it and, and go out and pick it up. And, um, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us, um, and speaking with us about the things that are going on, um, there in Minneapolis and, um, what's going on with River Valley worship as well. Thank you, Nathan. It's my joy. So good to be here. Awesome. Well, Ryan, we just rocked the Casbah.
These go to 11.